1995 Buick Riviera with a no crank complaint. It has already had the starter replaced and uh, that's as far as I've gotten with the vehicle. I just put the key in, tried to crank it, no crank. There is a concern of an anti-theft problem, so let me take you inside, look at the scan tool, and let's address the anti-theft question first. Before we look at the scan tool, there's some basic checks that I like to do with security systems. And you see right there is my security light, and that's with the key off. Uh, I don't mind security lights flashing at me when the key is off, but what I don't want to see is when I turn the key on to the run position, I don't want to see that security light blinking at me. So it lit and then went out, and there's the crank position. And notice the security light isn't lighting back up. So what that suggests initially is this is not an anti-theft problem. So let's look at the scan tool now. First thing I did was uh, read the fault codes on this and our history codes. We have a transmission range switch circuit fault. So a P0705 transmission range switch is a history code. Our current codes are none. And what I like to do next for these ones, and by the way, let me show you the key real quick. This is one of those designs where the resistor is in the key. Um, what I like to do with these systems is go to our data and what I want you guys to see is down here at the bottom it says uh, VATS that's vehicle anti-theft system problem it says no and I go in the crank position which I am right now and see it still says no so what that's suggesting is again this is not an anti-theft problem so the next step is to do some basic starting system voltage measurements uh, this is the wiring diagram for our Buick starting system you see our ignition switch is here it's hot all the time and it feeds the yellow wire in the start position only the crank position only there is a crank fuse on the instrument panel fuse block we could do some tests there which would verify our ignition switch um, we could also come down to the relay, which is what I think I want to do. It says left of the steering column. So when we hit the crank position, we should have power on both the yellow and purple wires. And then the anti-theft module, the pass key to decoder module, would control the ground to enable this thing to crank. Um, of course, the park neutral switch needs to be functional too. So we, we have a lot of different places we can we can test at. Um, I'm not going to start at the starter because I'm outside and this is buried underneath the exhaust manifold. I can't get to the, the starter easily. So I wanna start, I think, at the relay, which is inside of the car. And I have to remember that it's two heavy gauge yellow wires. Actually, these might not be heavy gauge. Um, no, they would be, because the starter solenoid circuit can draw upwards of 40 amps so these would be heavier gauge yellow wires and then a yellow black and a purple on the control so let's let's see if we can find this relay and do some tests there first all right i said i was going to the relay which is supposedly under the dash left side of the dash and i couldn't find it initially so i'm going to go to that crank fuse next and uh just going to use my multimeter for this my digital meter so you guys can see a nice big fat number on the screen all that is necessary here is a conventional voltmeter all right so this is my crank fuse let me get you a shot of where that's at so i'm on the left door jam area here looks like this um we have a 10 amp 10 20 10 10 20 10 it'd be this this should be my crank fuse right here. And uh, of course, I'm not cranking, so I'm reading zero volts on that right now. I'll get you back on the screen. All right, I'm gonna go in the crank position. That's holding it in the crank position. I have 12 volts on that fuse. So what that tells me is my ignition switch is fine and that it is 
uh, something from the relay down. So now I have no choice but to locate this relay. So I cannot find this starter enable relay. It says behind left side of instrument panel on bracket to the left of the steering column. I mean, I gotta tell you guys, Google has been my friend. So I just did a Google search on starter relay. And I don't know if this will help me or not, but uh, I'm pretty sure I know where this lamp control module is. This uh, multi-use module bracket, it's showing that starter enable relay like mounted inside of that. Uh, that may be why I can't find it. Well, there it is. That image was perfect on its location. Um, I had to pretty much yank it out of there to get it down here where I can work with it. So I'm gonna do some voltage measurements. I'm gonna back probe this and uh, let you guys see the screen. I probably, I won't be able to show you both at the same time. So I'll keep you focused on the, um, on the voltmeter. Okay, so first one, we already know that the starter, the ignition switch is good, but we will check the, the heavy gauge yellow coming in and the heavy gauge yellow coming out. That would be load side. Let's start with that. All right, this is gonna be one of the two load side feeds. Crank position, reading 12 volts. That would be one of the two. Let's go to the other load side. I'm crank this. And we're good. In fact, that is the relay clicking. So there is nothing wrong with the relay circuit at all. Um, no reason to check the control side, guys, because this is my load side control. So load side feed would be from the ignition switch, goes in from the ignition switch, and then when the contact closes, we'll call that the control wire that goes down to the starter solenoid. And then we have, if you remember, we have a part neutral switch that's in there too. So I think the next step would be to go to the part neutral switch because this relay is fine up here. All right, so we're good going in and out of the relay. There's two yellow wires, so we're not worried about the control at all, and we're not worried about the anti-theft system as we suspected. Park neutral switch, got a yellow com coming in and a purple coming out. So those are the two that I need to look at now. Going back to the car, hopefully I can get you guys a decent shot at that. Kind of a tough shot to show you guys um, below the brake booster here. And I am. See, we got the guru on it now. It'll um, get fixed. And back probing. I'll get a shot on that. Can't really show you too well where I am here, guys. The connector underneath, I'm on that heavy gauge yellow wire, back probing that. That's the inlet to the park neutral switch. Reaching inside the car here. So we're good going out to the switch. Now we gotta get the purple wire. I'm now on the purple wire. It's actually purple white. It's a heavy gauge wire coming out of this park neutral switch. And uh, the thing is, there was no connector for me to back probe, so I'm actually using a, a small little piercing tool. And uh, we'll do a voltage measurement on that. And keep in mind, before I forget, we did have a fault code for a transmission range switch. And that doesn't necessarily tie in directly to this because this is a non-monitored circuit as far as this park neutral part goes as far as the starter interrupt but um, there was a fault code for it so let's let's uh, get a voltage reading here cranking remember we're good going in on our yellow wire we're now on the purple and white wire coming out let's see what we got 
Okay, ready? Here we go. That is the crank position. We got nothing. So what we have is a park neutral switch problem. I'm gonna do one more test. Okay, so the final piece to this, we definitely have a park neutral switch issue. Um, had no voltage on the purple white wire. And uh, the last test I'm going to do, I'm actually using a, a power probe for the first time here, guys. Some of you might be excited to see that. This is a, a power probe four. What I'm going to do is uh, this yellow wire I have already connected to my, my purple wire down below. And if I'm correct that, um, that this part neutral switch is faulty, I should be able to energize the starter right here. So let's see if it does it. And I have the key off so the car doesn't start. So confirmed. Uh, we didn't need that last test to confirm it, but this is confirmed part neutral switch problem. I'll let you guys hear it run. I'll turn the key on. I have the beeper off. I don't like the, that's pretty annoying, but to each his own, turn the beeper off. Well, there you have it, faulty park neutral switch. You know what you guys didn't see me do is I did move the selector around and tried different positions and I uh, tried it in neutral, that didn't work. You know, moved it around as much as I could. So I don't believe it's an adjustment issue. Uh, that thing is buried. I'm gonna leave this up to, up to Pete to play around with it. Our problem is definitely within the park neutral switch circuit. Final piece to this, just for you guys that are curious, this transmission was replaced a month ago. And uh, so Pete had a, had a rain switch from the transmission that originally came out of here. And the reason that I point this one out is when I did my final measurement, guys, I poked a hole in uh, this purple white wire right here. Okay. And, um, you know, I said I was gonna stop apologizing for this and, and I'm not apologizing. I just, just want uh, to point out on this design that there is really no way to back probe this purple white wire in the location coming out of the park neutral switch without taking uh, this zip tie off and possibly even then, nope, this top cover would have to come off and there was no purple wire in here to back probe. I, I back probed the yellow wire, but coming out this purple white. And so really what I'm saying is there's no way that you could test this accurately without poking a small hole in this wire. I could have gone down to the starter, of course, and measured down here and read zero volts down at this eyelet. But what does that tell you? If you have zero volts here, it doesn't mean your part neutral switch is bad. You could have an open in this circuit, so you have to test it as close to here as possible to be able to condemn this. You check the voltage coming in, you check voltage coming out. We had good 12 volts in, no voltage coming out. So those people that, that uh, insist on never poking holes in wires, man, you, you don't work in the real world, so that's a message to you. You know, you're, you're either lying about poking holes or you're guessing sometimes and you're getting lucky changing the right part. Uh, I am not apologizing for poking a hole in that wire. Uh, this will all actually be replaced and I don't even have to worry about fixing it. You know, putting a little bit of liquid electrical tape on there is what I normally do. This whole unit is getting replaced. Uh, if I'm still here when Pete puts this in, I'll get you a final crank shot. If not, it's good enough. Faulty park neutral switch. Okay, one final shot of the Buick Riviera with the original park neutral switch uh, installed in this. From the key, fires right up. One more time. All right, and again, a final lesson on the security light. With the key out, we never worry about security lights that are flashing at us with the key out, okay? When we worry about security lights would be when the car is cranking 
or running. Car cranking, running, we want that light to go out, stay out. So let's say you crank the engine over and it's not starting and say I leave the key in the run position. Uh, if I see that, right, right now the key's in the run position. If I saw that light flashing like it just was, that is an issue with the security system. I lied. One other piece to add is the adjustment on this. This is the one we just took off the car. It's laying on the ground. You see the holes here are, um, they're, they're oval shaped. So there is an adjustment on this. And if it was an adjustment problem, the way that you can uh, check for that is you just move the, the gear shifter a little bit or throw it into neutral. And if it's an adjustment problem, you'll be able to get the car started by moving the gear selector. Not the case for us, this was just a faulty switch.